Well, hello there. This is Vitual Chess Chess Noob Learning and Having Fun with Chess. Now, in yesterday's Quick Wins video, I mentioned that I've played the occasional game without being logged on on chess.com. And basically, that allows me to try out and test some new ideas in an aggressive way. Uh, with it being fairly low stakes without it affecting my rating. And I know, I know, I probably shouldn't be worried about things like the rating, but you know, there's a bit of a psychological element there. So I want to show you what I found in uh, an idea that I found in the Vienna game Max Lang Defense, where the opponent plays a two knights approach, which is one of the best responses, in fact, to the Vienna. So I've got the white pieces, e4, e5, knight, c3. So that's a Vienna, Max Lang Defense, knight to c6, symmetrical. And here, initially, I just played my usual way. So, so bishop out, they develop the other knight, so that's that two knights approach. Uh, and then the logic here is I want to place that pawn on f4. To do that, I need to open up that diagonal, so I need to play d3 first, then f4, and then knight behind the pawn. So that's the usual logic. So I start that, and then I play this unusual move, which got me thinking a little bit. Okay, f4, so basically Vienna Gambit-like uh, move. Uh, they develop their bishop, and at this point, I had a bit of a revelation, I had a bit of a thought, that look at the structure here. Two knights, I've got the Vienna Gambit type pawn on f4, and of course we've got the e4, e5. This structure is very, very similar to the Vienna Gambit, where it's been declined by knight c6. Now what do I mean by that? Let's go all the way to the beginning. So let's say we get a Vienna game, and they play a fork B, I play the Vienna gambit, and they decline the gambit with the, with the other knight, the knight C6 uh, uh, decline. So here we go, two knights, Vienna gambit pawn, E4, E5. That's the structure. And those of you know, those of you who follow my channel will know that this is a mistake by black, because we can take, they take, and then we attack the knight. And this knight, basically doesn't have anywhere to go, because uh, no matter where it goes, um, whether it's back here or here, so let's say it goes there, we attack again, and eventually we force the knight back into its starting square, and we gain massive tempo. So this is a really winning line in the Vienna, and also why declining the Vienna Gambit with the knight c6 is bad. So let's go back to this game. So there we are, there's a structure. Now normally it doesn't work because um, after sort of takes uh, and then uh, when black takes back, the knight has an attack on my bishop because I've already moved the bishop to c4. And so this attack doesn't work. We basically just end up the same. However, in this game, I thought, look, what if I just move my bishop out of the way first? That's what I did. So that was the idea I wanted to test. So bishop to b3. Stockfish doesn't agree with this. As you can see, Stockfish just reckons, just do the usual thing, put the knight behind the pawn on f4, so knight to f3. Uh, and the reason for that is black can, you know, defend against that attack pretty much just by playing d6. And then, you know, I kind of just wasted a move, I suppose. So that's why this is an inaccuracy. But I made that move, and in this game, black didn't see the tactic either. I suppose it is a little bit on the obscure side. And so they played a funny, <laughs> symmetrical, you know, they're playing these flank pawns, a6. You can see it's a blunder. Plus 2.8, almost plus 3. And because of this, now works. Captures. And if they took back, in fact, I now even have a fork. Now, if they hadn't taken out their, their bishop, they still not, don't have the attack on my bishop, so that still works for me. Now, in this game, they saw that, so they didn't play that. They saw that, oh, hold on, they can't capture back, uh, and so, in fact, they moved that knight. And rather than sort of uh, undeveloping, they sort of moved it to the edge of the board. I'm not really convinced that that was better for them, but, you know, it is what it is. And so here, I now develop my other knight. You can see Stockfish reckons an immediate aggressive attack with my queen. You know, Stockfish here is a complete savage. Uh, what Stockfish's preferred line is, is queen to h5 with this double attack. Now you think that doesn't work because they can just play a g6, but now captures, captures, 
uh, and then you know the queen moves out of the way and you know the king is completely stuck and they've completely weakened that side. It's a complete savage. So I didn't see that. I played I suppose the yeah, more normal looking you know, knight to f3 here. They now short castles and I decide to push my knight forward because my goal now is to potentially um, really bring an attack over to this side. I really want an attack, so I knew that you know this isn't surely very good. Uh, potentially, I thought I'd be able to you know maybe push this bishop away as well, and then it's you know the strategy is all out attack, and you know black may not be able to defend against it. So here they decide to attack my bishop. That's fine. I'm going to leave it alone. They can take my bishop, and so pawn forward defended you know two ways what is the bishop going to do they take my bishop first that's fine let's take uh, bishop now forced back so these pieces are very sad positions really kind of out of uh, you know, out of out of action nothing else is really developed flank pawns slightly weird position very good for me so rather than you know short casting first and you can see stockfish reckons I should have been a little bit more principled I start throwing things at the black king they now open up that diagonal, that's fine, uh, it does attack, I'm going to ignore it, and this, I decide I'm going to crack open the, their king side. So sacrifice my bishop, Stockfish reckons that this is a mistake, however I think it's a tricky move because after it takes back, they're in some difficulty because their king is very exposed. So takes, queen here, I'm now going to attack that weakened h pawn. King moves forward, that's fine. I move my queen again, okay, moving in. Well, maybe not that square, <laughs> obviously, but moving in to the potential attack. Again, Stockfish doesn't think I have an attack, and we will see why. Uh, in this in this actual attack, I am one step of tempo too slow, and uh, and there's a critical square that I actually need to defend here, which is f5. Without defending f5 my attack has no legs. And Stockfish, according to Perfect Play, says, I can't. And that's why it says that this is a mistake and wants me just to play in a principled way. However, this requires Black to pretty much play perfectly, which in this game, they don't, because that's pretty hard for a human. So they make the best move, attacking my knight. And here I give a check, force the king back, queen back again, that's a mistake. Stockfish says I needed to move that knight out of the way, but I wanted to take. Uh, because what I saw, take, move the knight forward, uh, that knight is pinned, mating attack. That's, that was my idea. However, this doesn't work because this pawn can take, I can move the knight forward, it takes again, and now the problem is they can now bring the bishop to f5, defending that critical square. And they've just one step ahead of me and they can defend. But what happens? So they take, doing the right thing. I now take that pawn. Here they make a blunder. They needed to take that pawn so that they could bring the bishop to defend. By making that one move, ostensibly unpinning their knight, it doesn't matter. Knight forward anyway, and here they can capture, but I take back with my pawn the battery of the rook and queen. Now take note of this extraordinary position. They've got one, two, three, four, five pieces. So two full pieces up on me. I've only got one, two, three, uh, no, plus three in material. I've got one, two, one, two, one, two, three sets of doubled pawns, and yet I am completely winning. Mate is unavoidable. They make a random move, and here either of those moves is mate. I play queen h7 mate. Good game, GG. The big takeaway from this game is that these are some tactical ideas that you might want to try in your own Vienna games. These are definitely not necessarily good ideas. Well, they're bad ideas, they're bluffs and gambits, but in an actual game, they may work well, be quite good, and enormously satisfying when they hit. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.